All right, wonderful. Hi, hope you're doing well. So today I'm going to be talking about being better exposed or well exposed. You know, have you ever seen those people who, there are a few categories of people actually that fit into this idea of being well exposed. So imagine you've met some people who are very knowledgeable about a particular topic that they're really interested in. It might be maybe something to do with art or they're just really skilled at it. You know, people are attracted to those people because people like to see skill. People like to see people who are very engrossed in what they do and they love their work. You know, it, it really shines through and it makes that person appealing. And then beyond that, you've also got people who just seem to know how to work a room. They seem to know how to connect with people on different levels and on a variety of topics. So whether it's football or whether it's talking about politics or talking about, you know, the state of education, different things, or even just, I don't know, dancing, for example, they just seem to know how to connect with people in some way or another, or they're able to find something that helps them connect with people. And then you wonder, oh, how can I be that person? How can I be more knowledgeable? Or um, how can I work better towards the things that I want to do like how how do these people do it like what's different between me and this guy who went to the same school and yet he seems to be doing so much better our families are not that different our backgrounds are not that different we're not that different and yet he seems to be making so much more progress than i am well that sometimes boils down to exposure but let me explain when i say exposure it's to do with just having experience and knowledge of different things, right? So things from, um, let's say from your domain, so some things that you're interested in, but also a wide range of topics or domains as well, where you may not necessarily go so too deep, but you have some knowledge or a general idea of some things. That's what I would say is somebody who is well-rounded. Now, another word for well-rounded could be well-read or well-traveled, and that's because these experiences of uh, reading and gaining knowledge that way or traveling and gaining knowledge that way also add to a person's ability to be well-rounded, to be exposed, to be able to then connect with people on different levels. Now, having said this, it sometimes can be a challenge in terms of figuring out, okay, how do I do this? But before I even go into how you become more exposed, I... I think it's probably worth even noting the benefits of being exposed. I think being exposed could possibly lead to an easier life or a life where things kind of flow smoother or, um, and let me even go more into more detail. So for example, somebody who's more or better exposed or well exposed in the workplace is somebody who would be able to actually contribute better. So suggest innovative ideas to people. So in the workplace, for example, somebody who's able to take ideas from different domains, combine them, and actually prefer solutions in areas where people may have been stuck. All right, I had to change location in order to tell you this story. So there's a story of a guy from South America, Argentina to be exact. He was a mechanic, but this mechanic, due to his exposure and his ability to take action, he was able to create a birthing device to help with assisting pregnant women give birth in a way that doesn't cause any pain or any damage to the baby or the mother. Now, let me explain. So his name was Jorge Odon, and like I said, he was from Argentina. And he was a pretty exposed, um, would I say, mechanic. Let's let that pass. The name of this inventor was Jorge Odon, and basically he was a mechanic, but not any ordinary mechanic, a pretty exposed mechanic, because not only did he do his mechanical work fixing cars day in and day out, but he also had patents to his name because of different inventions he had come up with. However, one day, a conversation with a friend would forever change his life. So. A friend comes over to him and says, Jorge, come, let me show you this party trick. And basically shows him how if you have a wine bottle and you have a cork stuck inside it, there was an easy way to get it out. Now you can imagine this cork is um, quite thick, right? And once it goes in, sometimes if you, can't, if you can't get it at the same angle, it's stuck in that bottle forever. But if you want to get it out, there was an easy way. And it involved 
a plastic bag. So if the cork was inside, you'd push the plastic bag into the wine bottle and then blow into it. What it, that would do would be the plastic bag would envelope, envelope the cork, sort of like that, but with a lot of air going on there, like this. And once it had it enveloped like this, it would be easy to just pull and pull it out of the bottle. He thought that was a pretty neat party trick, but what he hadn't realized was that that conversation was gonna change his life. Because in later that evening, as he and his wife were asleep, he woke up with, an, with a eureka moment, just telling his wife, well, he had to wake his wife up. Honey, I think we have a solution to help women, pregnant women, give birth more easily. And his wife was like, yeah, sure, um, cool. And she went back to sleep. But he couldn't go back to sleep because he thought, okay, this could actually help pregnant women who were finding it difficult to give birth, to actually help assist with the birth, with the baby coming out. And so he went to speak to some medical friends of his, and then they took him seriously as well and decided to actually test out this idea. And so he kept building prototypes, kept testing it out, and it turns out that it's a pretty easy device to use for the practitioners, but also the mother and the baby came out on her unharmed when using it and actually found delivery so much easier. Now the alternative would be things like um, forceps or I can't remember the, the name of the other device, which would cause either scabbing or harm to the baby's um, soft you know, skin tissue. So it was, a, it was an invention that he was able to create. Now imagine this invention came from a party trick to do with a bottle, a cork, and a plastic bag. And he was only a mechanic. But he wasn't just a mechanic. He wasn't only a mechanic. He was an exposed mechanic, somebody who allowed himself to have different ideas, to be exposed to different ideas, and to take ideas from one domain to another and marry them in such a way that he was able to find innovative solutions. And the beautiful thing about that invention is that it's inexpensive to produce inexpensive and pretty easy to use as well, which then means that it can be adopted and used in developing countries to assist with births and to reduce maternal death or um, harm that comes to the child. Again, this is just a, a, crazy, a crazy idea, but that came from having exposure, having faith that your idea that came from that exposure could actually make a difference, but finally taking action on that idea. I just thought I'd share that with you. All right, let's get back to the talk. I think I remember the story of a guy in, in I think it was South America, who maybe had some mechanical experience and then well, at some point was in a, in a position where he had to deliver a baby, baby and they were able to use forceps and something else, but it was taking an idea from one domain and then applying it into a different domain where it was actually really beneficial. So that's another example of where being um, exposed, so having a wide range of knowledge and experiences to draw from can make a huge difference. Also, it can mean that you are able to connect with people in such a way that it opens doors for you. Um, opens doors and it also just makes life richer, you know? So take, for example, somebody who knows how to work a room in a sense. They're able to, when they get into the same position or same location as somebody, as different people, maybe of great caliber or people um, who they'd like to get to know or be friends with, they're able to relate to them on a different level, which is really nice. Uh, they're able to talk to them, they're able to grow, they're able to, you know, relate to them in a way that then opens doors. Many times people, they say people do business with people that they like. Yes, sometimes, or many times, there has to be a certain level of skill, but beyond that, what differentiates you? It could be that ability to relate to people, and again, that comes from exposure. It comes from being able to speak their language in a sense. It comes from being able to understand what makes them tick and play along as well with that. Uh, and in terms of exposure, it can just help you achieve things better because the more experiences and the more, the more things you know, the more experiences you have, the more uh, places you've been to and different contexts you've exposed yourself to, the more you realize that you have more opportunities, you have more 
what I say, you, you have maybe a greater Swiss army knife, which is a knife that has different kinds of tools in it. Um, a pocket knife, which has a different, different kinds of tools in it. But it just gives you many tools to play with in order to make things better for you in terms of making progress. Now, being exposed is not a guarantee for an easy life, but it doesn't hurt and it actually helps. And being exposed can also give you the confidence to actually take on new challenges because the more you take on different challenges, the more you expand your horizons, the more you try out for things that maybe are outside of your comfort zone, the more you expand that comfort zone such that when bigger challenges come, you're more able to deal with them. You have greater confidence in dealing with them because of the things you've actually already dealt with. Let me give you an example. So think of David in the Bible, um, the Bible story there. Uh, David was somebody who he faced rejection in his family, in a sense, and had probably just learned to just do well in solitude, you know. Then also in taking care of the family's uh, sheep and livestock, He's had to fight off a bear. He's had to fight off a lion such that when he came to the situation where the Israelites or the whole army of Israel were afraid of this giant called Goliath, he wasn't as afraid because he'd had previous experiences with God and previous experiences fighting things that were bigger than him, things that should have actually conquered him, but he was able to conquer. And in doing so, he would have built the confidence to realize, okay, I can take on big things. But it started from the exposure to the smaller things. So, and also his exposure to having faith in God and trusting that things will work together for his good, even if they seemed too big, even if they seemed really, uh, what's the word, um, insurmountable in a sense. Just the fact that he's been able to face those challenges and surmount them, survive them and get beyond them, he had way more things to deal with and play with. So that's exposure for you. But then how do you go about building your level of exposure? I believe I'm going to have to cover that over a few videos and kind of go in more into this topic because I really feel it can be helpful to a lot of people. And I want you leaving this video thinking, you know what? I can be better exposed. I can do this. I can have greater experiences that I would like to, you know, um, to would I say, define me or mold me, you know? Um, so here are a few things anyway that could help you when it comes to, when it comes to building your exposure, becoming well exposed. I've kind of, I've kind of alluded to some of these things already, but I'll, I'll go into more detail here. So first off, the things you read and uh, rather than just the things you read, the things you consume. So that's everything from reading books to reading news articles, to be aware of things going on around the world. Um, there's also the things you learn, whether you're at school or from your environment around you, but being deliberate in the things that you learn is very helpful. So when it comes to reading, for example, for me, I tend to read a lot of um, books to do with, um, when I say self-development, because I feel like they help me grow as a person. They expand my mind and my mindset and the things that I'm able to do. So that's something definitely worth looking into. So you can look at books as well that teach you about people, about relationships. One book I can always say that really changed my life and set me on a path towards good relationships with people was the book, How to Win Friends and Influence People by Dale Carnegie. And in that book, he talks about how to build relationships, how to sometimes even build favor with people because of how you're able to relate to them. I remember what I said earlier, it's a quote from somewhere I can't remember now, but basically people do business with people they like. So you want to be likable. You want to be that person that people think, you know what? Yeah, I really like this person. I really like this lady. I really like this guy, you know? Um, so that's a book that definitely helped me. I know there are other books as well. I'm very interested in business. So I'm interested in the world of business, entrepreneurship, and that's another thing that I've also spent time learning about, whether it is from books, whether it's from YouTube videos, whether it's from other social media accounts or blog posts. I make sure that I keep reading and learning about those things. And also, that takes me to another point. Your social media 
can be a tool for progress rather than a tool for distraction. So when people think about social media, they think of entertainment, they think of you know, gossip sometimes, they think of you know, accounts that you know, just let you while away the time. Imagine yourself just scrolling up and down on your phone, whiling away time. But actually, social media can be used in a way that actually benefits you way more than that. Let me explain, I'll give you some illustrations. So when it comes to your social media, for example, if you want to grow in particular areas, let's say you want to be more fit, physically fit, you can start following accounts that have videos and tutorials on health exercises that you could do that could make you more physically fit. Another thing you could do is, let's say your interest was in art, you wanted to learn more about, about art, um, just be more cultured, be more attuned to design, for example. Some of it will come from actually watching videos and, of people who talk about design, people who show you beautiful works of design. And in some of that, you will just pick up a few things over time just because of that exposure. Again, that word exposure. So, so that's something definitely worth looking into. Then there's, so I said what you consume, right? So that's the things you read, the things you watch, the things um, you interact with. For example, um, another thing that builds your exposure is the people you're around. So it's very helpful to be in situations where you meet people who are like-minded, people who are maybe who are more advanced than you in terms of something you're looking to become more advanced in, and then following them, you know, follow, following them maybe online, or if you get to meet them in person, learning from them, understanding them, asking questions. These things go a long way. Um, there are many situations where having mentors or coaches or people you can just refer to can save you many years of trial and error to try and figure things out. So that means that rather than it taking you 10 years to learn something, you could learn that same thing in a one hour conversation, which then gives you a head start and, and can propel you further and faster towards the goal that you're aiming towards. So that's something else to consider uh, as well. Then in terms of people, you've also got to think, okay, am I in the right environment um, that would help me grow or be more exposed? That's a question, particularly if you grew up in a small town or in, a, in an area that's more remote and has less diversity, you may be conditioned um, just by virtue of where you've been to a certain way of thinking, a, th a certain way of being, but that certain way of being and thinking is not the only way. There are many ways. So putting yourself in environments of people and things that would expose you to other uh, points of view, other ways of life, um, other perspectives is also very important. A way of doing that could be literally to move. There's a reason why Silicon Valley is known for um, a lot of innovative uh, universities. It's also known for a lot of innovations and entrepreneurship happening because it's an epicenter. It's a place that attracts people who are like-minded. It's a place that attracts people who are interested in tech, interested in entrepreneurship. And so just by being in the same area, these people can link up with each other. They can trade ideas. The level of thinking of what is possible just grows almost exponentially. This, this is the benefit of being in a particular group of people. I know someone who uh, started going to a church much, much further from where he lives, possibly an hour or even more. Not because there weren't churches in his area, but because in this church that he had discovered, he just saw people who were you know, hungry for God, people who were very driven, people who were able to achieve things way beyond what he had even thought was possible. He finds that when he goes there, his frame of mind of what is possible just gets expanded exponentially. And so he's just like, I've just got to be in this environment. And so he makes a sacrifice of traveling so far because he knows that there's something great he's getting from that environment. And so for you, that's where you've got to think, okay, what, what am I trying to achieve? And what sacrifice am I willing to make? The environment is very, very important. Now, Moving on from environment as well, is also looking at the places and spaces that you get to experience. 
So exposure may not necessarily mean you completely moving location. Um, it may be it may mean you traveling, like in the case of that guy that I just mentioned. But it could be an occasional travel. It doesn't necessarily need to be a regular thing, depending on what you're aiming to do. But just being able to see what things are possible. So, for example, another thing you could do is travel to a different city, a different neighborhood, a different country. See things that you know you may not have been exposed to before. See works of art. See different kinds of architecture. Interact with people from different cultures and different locations. That will help you, in a sense, grow your mind and think of what is possible. And then in meeting people in those places, if you see something that you want to emulate or something that you want to grow more in, you can then push for that. You can then get in touch with those people and say, oh, how did you do this? How did you grow in this? What does it take for me to, to grow in that sort of area and in that respect? Or why do you think like this? And then another thing that that brings me on to is asking different questions to help you grow in your exposure. So I call them the five W1H questions. And it's simple. It's the who, what, where, why, uh, when, and how. So in different situations, you may ask yourself why. So it takes going deeper. So rather than just seeing, oh, that's nice, or oh, that thing happened, ask yourself questions like why? Why did this happen? Why do they think like this? Question the assumptions. Why do they do things this way? Is there another way? Could there be a better way? These are things that help you, again, grow your mind because you become more attuned to the assumptions that people make and actually work towards saying, okay, do things actually need to be like this? Is there a better way? These are things that come from you asking those questions and allowing yourself to be curious. Curiosity is a huge thing. So asking those questions, coupling that with curiosity, genuinely wanting to understand and know about different topics is absolutely key when building your level of exposure. Because if you let yourself be curious, you then pursue that curiosity. And pursuing curiosity could be things like going online and researching things in more detail. Something I discovered, for example, my aunt was telling me um, about how she was just able to draw parallels. So there was a plane... A helicopter crash that happened in the Port Harcourt area of Nigeria, I believe. But then she met she on the news she heard the name of the company of the helicopter, and for some reason it rang a bell to her. And that was because some time ago we also heard of the unfortunate um, helicopter crash that ended up killing Kobe um, Kobe Bryant, I believe, and his daughter and. In so doing, she was able to draw parallels. Wait, that's the same helicopter that had an issue there that also had an issue in Nigeria. And she was able to draw those things together because she was very curious. So after she heard about the helicopter crash in Nigeria, she went online, did some more research, and then found and just heard the names and just realized she was able to draw those parallels. But again, if she hadn't been exposed, she would not have been able to draw those um, conclusions or link those two things together. I mean, if she ever finds herself in a position where she has to take a helicopter ride and she hears the name of that brand or a similar situation, she might know, okay, maybe it's not a good idea to go for that. Or if she ended up being a, a procurement officer for such a company, for example, that had that used um, helicopters, she would know, hmm, maybe we shouldn't go with this brand or this company at this time, or maybe we need to do some extra safety safety checks. So what I would say with this is that when it comes to your level of exposure, it's important to think, okay, how can I expand what I know and grow in, in that area, in a sense? Um, beyond that, I would just say the major thing is being curious and figuring out your unknowns, uh, moving towards understanding your unknowns, unknowns. So you've got your knowns, you've got your known knowns, you've got your known unknowns, you've got your... Um, unknown knowns and then your unknown unknowns. In questioning a lot of things and looking at different assumptions that you have, you've also got to decide, okay, what are the things I need to learn a lot more about? And what are the things that I have assumptions about and I don't know? And these will help you 
discover the knowledge you do have and how you can leverage that, but also help you seek out knowledge that you don't have but could be interesting to you, could be advantageous to you, um, and you can just build that way. I think I would have to do a lot more videos going into more detail about things like exposure and just building that exposure because I do believe a lot of people feel like they are stuck, they're not in a position where they can't change things and they just have to accept their lot in life. Whereas actually, that doesn't need to be the case. You can grow, you can explore, you can be that person who is more well-rounded, who has more knowledge, who is able to create different innovations, who is able to talk to people from different backgrounds. But the important thing is to start with knowing that, okay, I need to build my exposure. And it's not just about having money. It's more about being intentional in what you set out to do. So being intentional in getting knowledge, so reading books, being intentional in your social media consumption, consuming things that would actually help you learn and grow towards the area that you actually want to grow. Um, it could also be things like um, ensuring that you are in the places and spaces with people of like minds or people who have the skills and ability and the things that you want to learn and then growing along with them. It can be many things. I've said so much in this video so you can rewind and check out other parts that I've already mentioned. But yeah, if this resonated with you, drop me a comment. Let me know if being more exposed um, has been something that has helped you or if you've seen, met some people who have really challenged you in their thinking because they've been more exposed. But if you've got this far in this video, I appreciate you. Just go over and leave a sun emoji. There we go, in the comments. And I'll know you've gotten to the end. I really appreciate it. But yeah, until next time, check out some other videos that are going to appear on your screen, probably on this side of your screen. All right, I'll catch you in the next one. Take care. All right, bye.